the verse I had was Ecclesiastes 12:14, which is, For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So the title of the sermon is Works Meet for Repentance. So God's going to make our deeds known, whether they're good or evil. And when Christ came, he made the secret deeds of the world manifest to all men that all are sinners in need of salvation. So in Malachi chapter 3, verse 5, it says, And I will come near to you to judgment, and I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, and against false swearers, and against those that oppress the hireling in his wages, the widow and the fatherless, and that turn aside the stranger from his right, and fear not me, said the Lord of hosts. And John 3, 16, you'll all be pretty familiar with this passage. It says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh any to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. So again, we see Jesus Christ when he came, he came to reprove the world and to show them that they're all sinners. And they they hated the condemnation, which is that the lights come into the world and shown that uh, their deeds are evil. Um, But those who were already saved, you know, and had works according to the light, you know, they wanted to come into the light and they wanted to see Jesus Christ. And the Holy Ghost is also a reprover of this world. So after Christ was glorified, he ascended from this world to be with the Father in heaven and the Holy Ghost was left in his stead. It says in John chapter 16, starting at verse 4, But these things have I told you that when the time shall come, ye may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning because I was with you, but now I go my way to him that hath sent me, and none of you asketh me, whither goest thou? But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin, and of righteousness, and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not on me. It's the same thing we saw in John 3.18 of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and you see me no more, and of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. So we see here the judgment's already come into the world. It came by the Lord and by His Spirit. And the world's condemned because it's already judged unrighteous. And the prince of this world is also judged. And the evil deeds are made manifest by the light of the gospel and by the holiness of God. And so we see it's the Lord who judges all things. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4, it says, Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Uh, But with me it's a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self. For I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified. But he that judgeth me is the Lord. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts, and then shall every man have praise of God. And he also said in 1 Corinthians 2, you know, um, that the spiritual man, the man that's spiritual is not judged of man, but judged of God. It's the same thing he said here in 1 Corinthians 4. It says in verse 15 in 1 Corinthians 2, But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, Yet he himself is judged of no man, for who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ. So because we have the mind of Christ, you know, we should also judge ourselves. You know, make sure that we're sowing uh, works that are worthy of rewards, you know, that are, of, that are of the spiritual and not of the carnal or of the flesh. So in Galatians chapter 6, Starting in verse 1, it says, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. 
Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone, and not in another. So again, if you do good works, you get to rejoice in those good works. You know, and also if you take on the burdens of your fellow brother that he's struggling with, then that's a good work as well. And you're also able to rejoice in that, you know, in your brother being lifted up as well. It continues in verse 5. For every man shall bear his own burden, but let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. And be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall reap of the flesh corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. So God sees all the works of our hands, you know, the ones that are done in public and also the ones that are done in secret. He brings this to light in Matthew chapter 5. It says, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and shall persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. And again in Matthew chapter 6, verse 16, Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thy head and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy Father which is in secret. And thy Father which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. So again, don't do your good works to be seen of men, but do them to be seen of God. And also in Luke chapter 18, verse 29 and 30, it says, And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house or parents or brethren or wife or children for the kingdom of God's sake, who shall not receive many fold more in this present time and in the world to come, life everlasting. So there are rewards for good works, which if you read 1 Corinthians chapter 3, it's been covered before in, in a few sermons here. Um, we're not going to go there today. But it speaks about those good works at the judgment seat of Christ. When we're judged, some of them will stand and some of them will not. And you want to make sure that your works are going to stand. So, and as per my sermon on Ruth as well a little while ago, you know, we also saw there's no respect of persons in judgment. Leviticus 19.15 says, Ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty, but in righteousness shalt thou judge thy neighbor. So again, we don't judge according to the appearance. We don't judge according to skin color or status or anything like that. We judge righteous judgment according to the law. Because it doesn't matter who you are, the judgment's the same for all. You know, there's no special treatment for you, for if you're rich or you're poor, whatever. You know, we're all judged the same according to the law. In Exodus 12, uh, it says, verse 49, it says, One law shall be to him that is homeborn, and unto the stranger that sojourneth among you. Leviticus 24, 22 says, You shall have one manner of law, as well for the stranger, as for one of your own country, for I am the Lord your God. Numbers 15, 16 says, One law and one manner shall be for you and for the stranger that sojourneth among you. So it's one law for all, whether you're a stranger or whether you're of the tribe of Israel. And everything you do, you know, nothing is a secret to God. Yeah, and the Lord judge, judges righteously according to the, what's in the heart. And Jeremiah 17, 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. Again, the Lord's the one who tries us according to our works. Revelation 2, starting in verse 18. It says, and under the, church of the, under the angel of the church in Thyatira write, These things said the Son of God, who hath eyes like a flame unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants, to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed under idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. 
and I will kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. Nobody's going to escape the judgment of God, whether it be for heaven and hell, and you're standing before the great white throne, if you're not saved, you're going to be judged for all your works. You know, we're not going to stand in front of him and be judged for our bad works, because, you know, the, the, the new man's going to stand in front of the Lord, not the old man. But the old man, you know, for, for those who are not saved, they're going to be condemned to hell for that. But he judges all in this life and in the life to come. So you can earn the rewards at the judgment seat and can also be rewarded for this life. But you can also earn chastisement in this life if your works are evil and you can suffer loss at the judgment seat of Christ if your works are of no eternal value. So the lesson is, for God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So he sees all our works and we should do our best to make sure our works are of eternal value and of value to others. And that's what the book of James is about. We just read uh, James chapter 2, verse 8. If you fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, you do well. But if you have respect to persons, you commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors. So what of the prophet, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works, can faith save him? So it goes on to say, if your brother's naked and you don't do anything about it, then your works are dead. You know, because you have faith, but you have no works. So the, the conclusion is, you know, if you think that your works aren't noticed by others, God sees them. You know, they are known to him, and he'll reward you according to your works. You know, and the main thing is to do works that are going to be profitable to others, um, because then you won't suffer loss or chastisement. So to work out your faith with good works, you know, and don't let your faith be dead. Amen. Amen.